What time is it, by the way? Is it eight o'clock? Is it nine o'clock? Yeah, here in the province of Ontario, uh, clocks did fall back last evening. Kind of threw a little bit of us all out of whack, actually. As a matter of fact, my computer this morning was not charged. So I had to plug it in, and that's why it took me a little bit longer. So now I'm back up. I'm here. I'm with you this morning. And if you're wondering who the heck is this guy, let me have a little sip of tea this morning. Hmm. This guy right here, his name is Frank Fergini, a.k.a. Frankie Flowers, City TV's uh, weather and garden expert. I'm passionate about plants, wild about weather. You can see me Monday through Fridays on City TV's breakfast television as well as on City Line a few times a month. Uh, I am a product of child labor. I joke about that, but I worked for my family business for several years. As a matter of fact, I still do. Uh, they own and operate two garden centers, one in Bradford, one in Barrie, both called Bradford Greenhouses Garden Gallery. They're also greenhouse growers that uh, supply a whole bunch of plants to a whole bunch of people right across the province of Ontario. Over a million square feet of greenhouse is what is growing. And right now, of course, it's the good old poinsettia. Poinsettia. Um, I want to say good morning to everybody on a beautiful weekend as well that we've seen here in the province of Ontario. I mean, like unbelievable conditions with record-breaking highs yesterday where the West, Western Canada has been walloped with some snow earlier this week in cold conditions. So we got a whole variation of weather from west to east. And with that, we're all just trying to make sense of it all this morning. Um, we got to give a shout out to my good friend, Matthew Amos. That's saying, hey, out there. Uh, Reva saying, keep up the good work. Uh, we also have a very good morning this morning. Frankie from Hamilton Mountain. Hamilton Mountain's beautiful. I was out in Ancaster uh, this week with the Ancaster Tennis Club. So I got to drive over by the Hamilton Mountain, by the Niagara Escarpment. Just a beautiful, beautiful spot over there. You guys are quite lucky. Good morning as well from Orangeville this morning. Hello to you, Rosie. I hope your, guy, your day is going well. Miriam, my good friend there, good morning to you. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, it was, it's been a busy weekend. Uh, my kids have me driving all over the place is the best way to describe it. I am an Uber driver. That's what I would say it. Uh, Kim this morning says, uh, Good morning, Frankie. Beautiful, calm day here in Stratford. Uh, we got a lot of good mornings. A lot of people in good moods this morning, maybe with the extra hour of sleep. Marlene, good morning to you as well. We have another shout out this morning. A good morning, another beautiful morning in Rosso. It has been beautiful weather. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what's going on. Uh, I want to give a shout out. Uh, coming up this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Friday, you're going to see me at the Fall Cottage Life Show, where I'm going to be talking about your cottage garden about wintering in your cottage garden, about things that you should be thinking about next year, your cottage garden, which really is any garden that we're going to be talking about. Then on Saturday, I'll be at the Seasons Christmas Show talking about home for the holidays, about decorating your home. Last week, we gave away some tickets. Uh, the tickets we gave away, the winners of those tickets were Gloria Eisenberg, Lori Smith, Sandy Karens, Nancy Fleming, and then also May from the Toronto Community Garden. She also got herself a pair of tickets for this wonderful show that's happening. Of course, uh, it happens Friday through Sunday. If you want your chance to win a pair of tickets, all you have to do is go on to frankieflowers.com, frankieflowers.com. And then at the very bottom, I want you to register for the newsletter. So by registering for the newsletter, you're going to be enter your chance to win those tickets. And there's five pairs this weekend again. So once again, frankieflowers.com, go to the bottom of the website, enter the newsletter, and you'll have that chance to win the tickets. And then as well, coming up in December, December is when we kick off the newsletter. You're going to see a whole bunch of information there that's going to help you with your garden. Also tell you about events and even some giveaways on the newsletter as well, which is always kind of good. Uh, we got a happy good day today. Uh, happy fall, Frankie from Curtis. What a fall we've had, guys. Like unbelievable fall. We got shadows from Kohlberg out there. We got another keep up the good work this morning as well from Marie as well. Uh, we got another shout out this morning here from Trevor. Hello from Northern Ireland. Long time no see. Trevor Edwards Gardens. Hey, Trevor. It has been a very long time. The last time I saw Trevor Edwards was when he was at Canada Blooms uh, and he was with Ir Ireland Tourism. Ireland Tourism. And Trevor, I do actually have to still go out there and see you as well. My good friend Tanya, good morning to you. Hey, next Sunday as well. I know that Tanya is going to be going to this next Sunday. I will be at two sisters winery uh, with two sisters winery. We're going to be doing an event there. That's also very similar to home to the holidays, but this difference that you get is you get to drink some wonderful wine. You get to hang out with a bunch of people and we get to do a little bit of watch me make some different things for home for the holidays, including 
uh, an urn. We're going to be making an urn, a reef, and then something that's going to be looking good inside your home as well. Let's just hope the weather cooperates as well. Uh, Sandy, good morning. Frankie from Midland. Great weather this weekend. Uh, here we go with another comment about being a parent. I'm an Uber driver for my kids too. Hello as well. We got another question here maybe. Uh, this is from Elaine. Our cottage is on an island. Hmm. Mostly rock. Uh, any suggestions for flowers that will survive? So, um, you know, it's amazing when we do look up into the areas of the Canadian Shield, which is the Muskoka a region, cottage country, and you see all that granite rock and you're pretty amazed at some of the plant material that grows there. And it's pretty amazing that everything from uh, tall trees can grow in rock to a variation of junipers can, can grow in rock as well. The key is, is that when we're planting in situations like that, we still need soil. Uh, the other thing that we will need is for the plant material to be very young at start. So smaller, anything from a one gallon to a four inch potted size is what I would recommend. Perennials that will do well in those areas are rutabecchia, which is uh, rutabecchia is black eyed Susans. They tend to do very well. Cone flowers, the purple magnus cone flowers will do well in sunny locations. Uh, so there are several different flowers that will do well up there that are more prairie based drought tolerant flowers. Because the reason why we're looking for a drought tolerant perennial is that we're looking for a perennial coreopsis, depending upon zoning can do well as well, is there's really not a lot of soil mass, like soil, like amount that's there. And so they dry out rather quickly. So we're looking for drought tolerant, but cone flowers, try those and as well as rutabecchia. And those are two good suggestions for you. Uh, Sandy. Good morning from Alliston. Alliston, the, the big place of potatoes where everybody's harvesting potatoes right now. Uh, Marlene has another question here. Marlene, how do I deal with powdery mildew on my rosemary? I have never watered anything but the dirt. The only thing I can do, uh, I can think, is that it rained for a few days before I brought it inside. Powdery mildew with rosemary is quite common. Even when the rain happens and the rain hits the ground, it can actually if it's a heavy rain, it can actually pop up pathogens because it hits on the soil. It bounces that soil up onto the rosemary plant. With that, it could put the spores that are there that's going to create the powdery mildew. Now that you have powdery mildew, the way to remedy it or reduce the amount of effects of that powdery mildew is to use something like a fungicide. So miracle Grow does have a fungicide that's available. You can go to any of your home improvement stores like a Lowe's, a Home Depot, a Canadian Tire, a garden gallery, independent garden centers, like even if you have a Sheridan close to you, uh, Vandermeers, you're going to look for a green bottle and it's going to say miracle Grow fungicide on it. And that's what you'll do a couple applications of it. Uh, by being inside the home, it should reduce the powdery mildew because your home is drier now as well. So those are some things. But prevention for next year, um, just do a spraying of that a little bit later in the season. This year we did get some powdery mildew on many things. Uh, so that fungicide is really as a preventative. So even before you see it, do the occasional spraying just to prevent. And it's something that's not harmful for you. So you can still use the rosemary as well. Uh, Patricia, good morning and hello from Port Dover. Port Dover on the shorelines of Lake Erie. Just a beautiful place to be. Uh, so good morning to you too. Uh, we got uh, a woohoo this morning from Laurie Smith. Can't wait to see you at the Christmas show. And thank you for the tickets. Thank you for joining the newsletter. That's how simple it is. Uh, so it's going to be great. Make sure you come up and say hello to me as well. Uh, Janine this morning says good morning from Ensmore, Fourth Lakes. I actually know where Ensmore is. Clean up the gar garbage, which is mostly hostas. Do you recommend leaving the leaves or disposing them? I like to clean them up. I recommend, you know, now that you've had a few frosts in Ensmore, just cutting them back, cleaning them up. Nice clean garden that you're going to have. Of course, we don't leave the leaves of uh, hostas because those leaves just kind of fall right down and they really kind of rot out. And they're you know, if there is any sort of disease or anything that's there, I personally recommend just cleaning them up. So that's what I say. Um, here we go with Debbie. Can you replant any of the plants that come in the fall planters that are bought at grocery stores? Yes, you can. Um, so you can try planting some of the fall mums that are there. They're a shallow root system. So it's kind of hit or miss whether they'll come back next season. They come back actually relatively late in the season. So they're very late to leaf out. So a lot of times people will dig them up and discard them before they even give them a chance to leaf out. So just be a little bit forgiving in the spring and they will leaf right from the bottom. Sometimes in those planters, you'll see some fall asters that'll be in there. You can plant the fall asters with your perennials. Sometimes they will have rutabecchia and or coneflower in there. You can plant those. 
Uh, sometimes they have pansies. The pansies are actually cold tolerant. You could plant them. Some places they will actually even overwinter for one season, but you can tear some of those apart and plant them and see what will overwinter. So it's always worth a shot that's there. Um, how do I prune a rose uh, raspberry bush? So raspberries, anything that bore fruit this year, any of those canes that actually had fruit this year are what you want to remove. Because what the new canes that grew this year, and this is for most raspberry varieties, some varieties are different, but most as a general rule, we're only removing the canes that had fruit on this year. Any of the new canes that grew this year, we're leaving them because those are what going to give you fruit next year. And that's it. Uh, with raspberry, though, if you have a row of raspberries, you want to also dig out or remove any suckers or side shoots that are growing off the sides that are starting to encroach into other areas. I always recommend putting a nice, really good solid edge between that row of raspberries in the lawn or whatever else is there because you want to keep them contained. They can get out of the way quite easily. <clears throat> uh, this is for Lori Reynolds. Morning, Frankie from Coburg. Good morning. My Rio is still blooming outside. Can I overwinter it? Rios, which are diplodinias, are an amazing, amazing plant. They actually have the ability to handle frost and they have the ability to bloom into November, which is what's happening now. Can you overwinter it? Diplodinias, you can overwinter. You can bring them indoors. They will not overwinter outdoors. You want to put them in a south or face westing room. Uh, you really, really want to allow them to dry out in between waterings. When they come indoors, they will drop some of their leaves. It's beneficial for them to be in a room that's a little warmer in the day, but cooler at night. So if you have a room that, you know, that it's just a, like the spare room that's still nice and bright, but it doesn't get overly warm in that room, especially at night, those are some ideal locations. And the watering, don't keep it too wet. If you keep it too wet, it's just going to rot out and die overall. Uh, got another good morning this morning. Good morning, Frank, and thanks for all you do. Amazing. You are amazing. I'm not that amazing. I'm just having fun. This is, I enjoy doing this, by the way. So mm. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy finding out some tips and tricks. I enjoy keeping myself sharp as well, because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Uh, and uh, I enjoy talking to the community that's here. And I enjoy seeing the community uh, work together to answer questions that I don't get to. I mean, you know, my whole mission is to try to get people out there to grow something, just to grow a plant, to have a plant, uh, and then also get into the act of gardening. Because gardening is a physical activity. Outdoors, it's a physical outdoor leisure activity. So you're outside, you're moving. That's key. Uh, you're playing with plants outside. Plants make us feel better. That's key. Maybe you're growing your own food that you're eating better. That's key. If you have plants indoors, it's actually improving the air quality of your home and actually adding humidity to your home. That's key. So plants not only make us happier, they make us healthier. So my little mission here to kind of motivate people to get out there in the garden is to make them happier, healthier people and have some fun and have something to brag about. Like say, I did that. Yeah, I grew that and I love that. And so that's something that I, I really, really kind of, that's, that's what my motivation. Uh, can you grow your mums from seed and how? Mums are grown mostly from cuttings. Um, there, there probably are some... Um, Chrysanthemum varieties, and there are some chrysanthemum varieties grown by seed. I know there's some dianthus varieties that are grown by seed. It'd be a long, long time to grow them by seed, long germination period. So they're most easily grown by cutting. And a cutting is taking a section of that plant off, rooting that plant, and then producing more thereafter. So most mums are grown by cuttings, and that's how I would recommend growing uh, a chrysanthemum, is by a cutting. Uh, how do I overwinter a lavender tree? So yeah, lavender has really gained a huge amount of popularity. Lavender is very similar to rosemary when you're bringing rosemary in. And you can see on my Facebook and, and even on my Instagram, a little bit of a chat about bringing rosemary in. So the challenges of overwintering any plant from outside inside during the winter months in our homes, first is our homes are really dry. Like our homes get very dry. Now, the second challenge is, is that we just had, you know, fall back in terms of daylight savings hours. Our days are getting tremendously short in terms of daylight hours. So one thing that we have to do is we don't want to leave them too wet for too long. Lavender trees, rosemary don't need a lot of water indoors during the months of from late October all the way through to March because we don't have a lot of daylight hours. So you really want to water them only when they're dry. But our homes are dry. The air is dry. So the occasional misting of those plants will be very beneficial. 
The lavender, like the rosemary, should be in a south or west facing window with as much light as it can naturally get indoors. Uh, when you bring that lavender tree in, it's always a good idea to spray, spray with an insecticidal soap like a bug be gone just to make sure that there's no insects coming in. And those are your best shots. Then come March when our daylight hours start to get longer, we're going to start to increase watering. We're going to start to fertilize at that time. And then when we get into mid-May to the end of May, when frost warnings, when there's no frost outside, we then gradually move it outdoors into higher amount of light levels. So we'll put it into part sun first for a few days and then move it over into full sun. And that's how you do it. Um, let's take a look at some of these new messages that we have here. Uh, good morning this morning from Scarberia, aka Scarborough. I encouraged a young couple I met yesterday who built planting boxes and put them on their front lawn and sent me a picture to ask for advice. Sherry, I'll take a look at that. So I, I will most definitely take a look at that picture. I haven't seen it yet, um, but I will. I don't know where you sent it, if you sent it on Facebook and or uh, Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com. So Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com is really probably the first spot where I'm going to see it. Susan saying good morning this morning as well. Good morning, Susan, to you. Uh, we got another hi this morning. Hi, Frankie. Godmother is now the best time. Godmother is now the best time to plant tulips. How it's warm or wait till it gets colder. Uh, I would go ahead and plant your tulips. Um, uh, the reason being is we're going to get into colder air come Tuesday and we will still be fairly mild next weekend, but we're going to get into temperatures minus two through the overnights on Monday. Daytime highs on Tuesday, right around eight degrees. Today's a beautiful day. Today's a day of beautiful temperatures in Southern Ontario. So I would take advantage of this day to get out in the garden, to do some planting, plant the tulips, plant the daffodils, plant anything that you have, because we are in the month of November. Uh, if they sprout a little bit, or if they have sprout, just let them be. They will naturally uh, go back into their dormancy period as well, and they will be fine overall. Good morning from Coburg this morning. Good morning to you. Uh, Dave Little this morning is saying good morning. Frank, can I bring my fern indoors for the winter? You can try. Um, Kimberly Queen ferns, or those guys there tend to do better when you bring them indoors. Boston ferns, um, unless you have a room that, you know, you have good amount of humidity. So if you have a bathroom that actually has a, a window, so it actually has natural light, and that's a bathroom where you're using the shower often, it's probably your best bet for your Boston fern because that area will always have some humidity by people having showers every day. They'll put some humidity in the room. It'll get some natural light and that's your best bet. So you can try, but in my, my experience, I would say that 70% of the people that try to overwinter ferns don't have success, but some do. And it's all based upon the environment that they have. Hi Frank. Uh, it's Viola or voila from Barry. Uh, what can I do with my basil plants? I'm finding a hard time with the soil turning like white crusty on the top. Yes, it's fungus, but it makes me sad because I absolutely love fresh basil. That white crusty on the top of the surface of the soil can actually just be some salts from water. Uh, it could be, it could just be the water that you're using that can be causing the, that, that crustiness on the top. It doesn't affect the basil plant. It's hard to overwinter basil indoors. Uh, for basil growing it during the winter months inside, I often recommend growing in a grow system which is a light kind of containing system. So that's either the click and grow system or the arrow garden system. Uh, those two systems are really great for growing herbs. Tabletop, light comes on to give you more light hours because we just don't have enough daylight hours. It's actually aquaponics. So it's, it's grown in water with a bubbler inside there. So you don't have any issue of diseases. It's just a really clean, easy way to grow basil or any herb indoors. Basil does really well. Uh, there you go. So we got a good morning from Quebec from Carol Jones. Uh, we got another Susan replying to Susan Poff. Good morning, Christine. I love it that you guys are shouting out to each other where we have this little community out here. Uh, Victoria Evans. Hi from Barry. Hi from Barry. When is the best time to bring a Dahlia tubers in? I would do it this weekend. How should they be stored and when should they be replanted? So the dahlias, so what you're going to do is you're going to lift them today. It's a nice sunny day. You're going to lift them. You're going to cut any green or any uh, stems off of them. You're going to put them on a patio table outside during the afternoon today. You're going to let that soil that's on them dry off. Once that soil dries off, and I would do it before the sun sets tonight, I would then go take, um, uh, even if you were to take a brush, and you're just going to try to brush as much soil as you can 
off those plants and make sure that they're fairly dry. If they're not dry yet, put them in the garage and allow them to dry for a few days before. Once they dry and we see that they'll dry around them, we're going to put them, you can put them in a shoebox or in a bushel basket and you're going to put them in shredded newspaper and or dry sawdust. And then you don't want them to touch each other. You're going to store them in an area that's cool and dark, but doesn't go below the freezing mark. So if you had a fruit, fruit cellar, a catena, something like that, uh, somewhere where it's nice, cool and dark, cool and dark is key. Then come um, early March, you're going to put, you can pot them or plant them into pots and start growing them indoors. And then they'll be potted outside in mid May to the end of May in Barry. So they're not going to have any frost. The key is, is when you go to pot them in the, the spring, there's a way that you can cut them. So you can just take a look even on Google, overwintering dahlia tubers and then replanting dahlia tubers. You'll see because you'll, you're going to do cuts and sections and you're going to make sure those tubers have at least three eyes too. Look at that. Zoom out. Boom. Let's see if I can zoom it back in. Can it work? Sometimes this thing works. Zoom. No, it's not working. Okay. Well, we'll leave it like that. You guys can see that I have some stuff there from Revenue Canada. Always fun. Love that as well. So there's some uh, answers to some of your questions that are out there. My camera's got a mind of its own today. Actually, I can fix that too. So what we can do is we can go here. We can go there. And I can go here on my computer. And I can go boom and zoom it in on my computer. And then I can go like that. So there we go. Okay. Next question. Angie. Good morning from Bradford. Good morning to you. Uh, Deborah. What's Deborah want to know? I thought dailies had to be hit by frost before digging them out. Deborah, in Barrie, we have had frost. So there has been a couple of frosts that we've already had. My property here in Bradford has frost. Boom, everything's been hit. So it's been hit by a bunch of frost already. So if you haven't, if you're watching us and you're watching in an area where they haven't been hit by frost, we do want the foliage hit by frost first. So if the foliage is green, we're not lifting them. We're waiting for a few frost first. But I'm speaking to somebody in Barrie, so I should have mentioned that as well. So thank you very much. Lacey. Lacey saying, good morning for the Choise. Good morning out there as well. Um, so a couple other things. I want to talk to you about fall leaves. So right now, um, in most places, the leaves have fallen. We had wonderful fall colors that were this year. And so from fall leaves, we have them sitting right now on our properties. And the question is, what is the best way to utilize these fall leaves? First and easiest thing that you can do is if you don't have a ton of fall leaves on your property, taking your lawnmower, mulching blade, just going across your lawn, cutting the lawn and mulching those leaves into a, like pulverizing them basically down so that we can still see the tops of the blades of grass after cutting is fantastic. It actually amends uh, and will break down and add some nice nutrient into the soil. Second thing that you can do is if they're clean, there's no disease on them, is we can rake them into our gardens and we can actually kind of even just put a little bit of soil on them or even just turn them into our, our gardens a little bit. Uh, that will actually keep them from blowing away. It will actually allow them to break down during the winter months. Then in the spring, we just dig them in or put a couple of other bags of triple mix on top of them and mix them into the soil. That will improve our soil. If you have a whole lot of leaves and you just want to remove them, we really want to find out from our municipality, how do they accept them? Are they in the brown paper bags? Some municipalities don't even want them in the bags. They just want them raked to the curb and then they'll come by and they'll suck them up. Other municipalities will want different types of bags or even different leaf pickup dates. Uh, blowing your leaves. If you have a leaf blower, a reminder, be good to your neighbors. Uh, you know, on weekends, let's wait till after eight o'clock in the morning to get there with their leaf blowers. And let's just be mindful that they are loud. And by blowing your leaves, you're blowing them in other areas. And sometimes they can cause a lot of disputes. So let's just be mindful for there. But leaves are carbon. So what they are is even when you add them into the compost and even keeping some leaves to the side for your composter is really key because with, with a composter, what we're doing is we're layering that compost. We're layering green, which could be anything from grass clippings. Then we're putting brown and that brown could be dried leaves. So you put the leaves and then we're putting a little bit of soil. So we're layering that compost. And by having some leaves set beside the composter, we can actually allow them to uh, just be added to the composter during the time of the winter and even in the spring of next year before we have any brown material. So those are some things that we can be doing with leaves. Uh, there we go. We already answered that question. So let's go down to some new messages here. Uh, we got another question here we have this morning from uh, Carrie. Hello from Barry. Should I clear away the leaves from my garden? I'm in a condo owner from Toronto, new to gardening. How much do you suggest I cut back the gardens? I have lots of hostas. So for the hostas, I would just cut them back and remove any of the foliage that's there. 
any of your perennial plants that you have, like let's say coneflowers or anything that has a little bit of a more woodier stem, stem, forgive me, cut those back so they're about six to eight inches away from the ground. So just cut them so there's still six to eight inches left. That'll collect snow around them. You can leave leaves in the garden and you can leave them there, which you can till in the garden in the spring, or you can clean them up. I kind of like leaving some in because they provide some insulation. They actually will break down. And then in the spring, we're going to remove them after we get a little bit of a warm up because we'll allow some of those pollinating insects to sit there and stay within them. But clean as much as the garden up as now. Really, another key thing that people often forget is even if you have weeds growing in your garden right now, if you can remove those weeds, that'll cut back on your work for next year. They'll actually reduce the amount of weed seeds that sit. I also like to do an edge of my garden at this time of the year. It'll save me some work that's in the spring. But those are some of the things that you can do. And welcome to the world of gardening. If you have any questions whatsoever, and gardening is a journey, we are here to help you answer those questions. Uh, we got another one this morning from Peggy. Good morning, Frankie. I planted some seeds in my garden this fall to get growth in the spring. Any suggestions like parsley or arugula and radishes? Um, so you can do any of those cold hardy crops that you can be doing. Sometimes um, you can even be doing some cold frame gardening. Uh, so that is where you can actually even be harvesting into the winter months. And those are all three that you're listed there that would work well into that. Other seeds that you can consider that you could put down are beets is something that you could put down. Uh, Swiss chard is something that you could put down as well. Uh, you could even do some of the leafy greens as well, some leaf lettuces and things like that. Those are the other ones. But Peggy, what I would really recommend you do, take a look at cold frame gardening. And there's a book called Undercover, which is really growing into winter. That book, Undercover by Nikki Jabbar. Take a look at that book. It's a great resource for you that's there as well. Uh, hi, Frank. Sorry. Uh, Viola, again from Barry. I have Japanese hedges that I planted last year around my pool and was wondering if I should wrap them for the winter to protect them. So if it's a Japanese hedge, I'm thinking it's probably Japanese yew, if it's the case, they're broadleaf evergreen. Uh, I would just put posts on either side of them and then just staple burlap to those posts. So the posts are going to be nice and tight to them, and that's going to create a burlap screen. Make the post taller than the Japanese yew's hedge, so it's going to be higher and on either side, and then just staple burlap on top of that. And then that'll do a nice little windscreen. That'll still leave the top open so that snow can still fall in but it's gonna protect that hedge from wind and sun. And by protecting it from wind and sun, it's gonna reduce the amount of moisture loss and really help your hedge out. So you don't need to wrap them. I would just build a windscreen for them out of a burlap and that's just by putting the, the post down in as well. So we got another question this morning. Hi, Frankie, my Heliopsis sunshine had trouble, terrible fungus this year. What should I do with it? Uh, the Heliopsis just cut it down to the ground. Try to, if it did have a lot of fungus from this year, it is indeed a perennial. What I would do is try to discard all that dead material that's there because it could have some spores that are on it. And that's something that we definitely want to put to the curb in a compost bag. Try to clean up that area as much as possible. If there's any way that we can increase airflow or air circulation around that plant next spring, but maybe removing some of the other perennials in the area. Heliopsis is known as uh, the outhouse plant as well because it's actually a tall plant that used to be grown around outhouses. Susan has a comment, I think. I like to leave my coneflower seeds alone. Do not cut down, such as birds as American goldfinches. Love them. Plus what's left will reseed in the spring. So that's another example of some of the perennials that you can leave up that will have some seed pods there that provide a little bit of some food source and they will drop. Coneflowers is one example of that, as well as rutabacchia. The rutabacchia, um, which is black-eyed Susans, They'll drop seeds and you'll have a lot of rutabacchia in time. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, this is Lisa Ann. Time change, busy for a weekend. Miss live, but we'll re-watch. Thanks. No worries. Time change is really something that does really mess a lot of people up. I'm going to end it right here as well. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy for everybody that joined me. But for those this tomorrow, a reminder that uh, those clocks did fall back. So you may be a little bit messed up. Your clocks may not have adjusted inside your home if they're not already automatic to all the parents out there that tomorrow may have their kids at home you know uh, let's just do the best that we can for a situation that's out there for all those striking education workers you know i really feel like you're in a tough spot because i know you know for the wage that you work for uh you love kids so i know that you love kids uh, and i just wish that there was a be better resolution uh, i feel that you know kids should be in school 
I just think kids should be in school. And it's something that all of us should be trying to achieve. And especially our provincial government using the notwithstanding clause to try to force this is using is taking away a right. And I don't think the right to strike, the right to protest should always be there. It is a foundation to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and it's actually a foundation to democracy. And taking away a notwithstanding clause uh, or using the notwithstanding clause is something that I just think is just bad form. I think there was other ways that it could have been done uh, and not where a right has been taken away. So my kids will be home tomorrow uh, and I will be at BT in the morning and rush back to make sure that they're all good. Uh, so I'm going through this as well as everybody else that's out there, but let's just do the best we can. We are survivors. We know that all. And at the end, let's just get in our gardens. Let's just get out there. Let's have a smile. Let's enjoy the sun and let's grow something. Just grow something. Love you all guys. Have a great day. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. No